Welcome everyone, I'm Quinn, the developer of the Minecraft Resource Pack Immersion, and today I thought I'd show you a little bit of the process of uh, creating a texture. Uh, my process, that is. Um, so today I'm actually going to be creating the dirt block. Now, I've already textured the dirt block, but as you can see here, but it's one of the first textures I made, and though I've changed it several times since then, uh, just it's been just small tweaks, um, and I've realized it's ultimately not that much like the default texture. So generally, the first thing I do when I'm creating a texture is I start with the base 16 by 16 texture, and then I scale it up. And I scale it to 32 by 32 because that's the resolution of my resource pack. Um, and then sometimes, okay, I'm thinking for this one, I'm going to do some interpolation, which that basically just does what you see here instead of keeping it pixel perfect. Um, so this is a good base for me to start with. Um, okay, so then I'm going to start with the paintbrush tool and basically just start working at it. Now, this part of the video is time-lapsed because the actual texturing process took an inordinate amount of time. These kinds of textures, which have no particularly clear indication of shape, tend to be the most difficult to get right when upscaling. They often involve a lot of backtracking and reworking before yielding a satisfactory result. So what I'm doing here is sampling colors from the vanilla texture and basically just refining the general shapes provided from the upscaling. I tend to start with the paintbrush tool, which provides a smoother stroke, useful for shaping the general outline. I also tend to use the paintbrush at 50% opacity, which is why the strokes do not instantly fill the pixels with the sample color but rather gradually bring the colors closer to the sample. After a while using the paintbrush, I switch to the pencil tool for more control and to alter pixels individually. I do adjust the pencil opacity on occasion, but I generally have it at 20%. One mistake I made with this texture was not separating the stones onto another layer. This ultimately led to the dirt being tainted, if you will, by the gray from the stones. I did later attempt to separate the stones, but ultimately found myself continually texturing on the stone layer by accident, and I eventually abandoned the idea. Several other processes you might notice me using are the noise and sharpen filters. These add more variability and roughness to the texture that tend to be difficult to achieve manually. Sharpening the texture in particular tends to be very helpful with regaining some of the contrast that is lost through texturing. However, I have noticed a distinct drawback when using these filters with frequency, as they tend to slightly skew the colors of the texture. For example, the dirt block, the default dirt block texture, uses only a lim limited number of different colors. And while the colors seem to fit within the scheme of the texture, each color still has a slightly different hue. So when creating an upscaled version of the texture, these different hues ultimately blend, creating colors that do not fit within the scheme. This can be mostly subdued by sampling the original colors instead of the mixed colors in the working texture, which is why you see me frequently switching over to the vanilla texture. However, the HSV noise and sharpen filters are directly modifying the individual pixels, and so the more they are used, the more the undesirable hues are drawn out. During this texture, I worked to counteract that by selecting various hues and using the colorized filter to revert them to the original hue. While this is mostly successful, it does slightly change the look of the texture, and sometimes just makes it harder to get the texture looking right. I should probably mention now that I'm using GIMP to create this texture, and I've used it to create all of my textures in the past as well. GIMP is a free and open source alternative to Photoshop, and while it may not be quite on Photoshop's level yet, it isn't very far behind, and is every bit as professional. I will also say that I am by no means an expert at GIMP, or even texturing for that matter. I am continually learning better tools and methods for texturing, and even my texturing process is very subject to change. 
The techniques and workflow I'm showcasing here are simply what I have discovered over the past three years of learning and working on this project. So, when the texture really starts shaping up visually, then it's time to offset it. I always offset it by 50%, both vertically and horizontally, to view all of the seams. I then tweak it until it looks good and offset it back. Oftentimes, I will have to go back and forth several times, as the changes I make while the texture is offset can create seams on the original view, and vice versa. Once I'm happy with both the regular and offset views, then I tile it, generally in a 3x3 layout. This allows me to see the greater picture, and I can then alter the texture accordingly. I generally tile the texture several times, going back and forth, tweaking imperfections in the texture, and viewing the changes. Now, you might notice that the majority of the time on this texture seems to be a sort of back and forth, repeating the same processes and not really getting anywhere. This isn't how most of my textures go, but as I said before, this one proved to be particularly difficult. Every time I started to feel like it might be good, I would tile it, only to see it looked absolutely terrible. I finally took a new approach, separating the shapes into more isolated sections to simulate clumps in the dirt. This meant that I had to stray further from the shapes suggested in the default texture, breaking up the larger streaks of shadow and highlight into several smaller pockets, but I ultimately decided that it was my best shot at getting the texture to look good. Okay, so now I've tiled it. It seems good. And so the next step is I'm going to export it and test it out in game. Okay, so I'm just going to reload and take screenshots. Now I'm going to compare the textures. I'm actually going to do okay here now. I'm going to actually open up this file. Oh, never mind, it's already open over here. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to actually uh, add a new layer. Oops. And this is just going to be a very simple tint. And what this does is it dulls it just a little bit. I try to avoid this when I can because already immersion is a bit too smooth. Okay, so the difference now. Okay, so we're back to time lapse now. I was trying a lot of different things here because ultimately I wasn't very happy with how the texture was looking in game. Probably primarily because it just didn't seem to fit with my current textures, uh, specifically the grass block side, didn't look look right. Um, and also probably because I was so familiar with the old immersion dirt texture. And so it's just hard to get used to the new one. And so I just did a lot of tweaking back and forth, just trying to get it right. All right, so I'm back in game now, and this is the final texture. Well, I say final, it isn't necessarily final because this update is, I'm overhauling virtually all of the textures, or at least taking a look at all of the textures, seeing if they need it to be overhauled, hence the dirt block. Um, 
And so I may tweak this and the, the tint on it as I overhaul grass and the grass side. Um, it all depends on how it ends up fitting with my other overhaul textures. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video interesting. Please leave a like if you found this entertaining, leave a dislike if you found it offensive, and be sure to subscribe if you're interested in seeing more content like this. With that said, I hope to see you in the next one, and until we meet again.